guys, today we're unboxing and reviewing Atari's VCS console. We'll get into it right after this. Alright, so let's start off with accessories. I think that'll be a good start and save the best for last. Yeah. So we've been waiting for this for a long time. We were backers on Indiegogo and I think that was about back in 2017. So it's been a long time and here or there I've even forgotten it's even coming out. Yeah. It's been so long. A lot of people were thinking it was a scam and it wasn't coming. I never felt that way but yeah it was definitely a long time so we're actually really excited. So let's start off with the wireless modern controller. So this is like your average gaming controller. So we'll start off with this. Yeah, it's just a different Atari than it was back when they came out in the 70s and produces of the 2600 and the Jaguar, so interesting to see how this is going to be. So, oh, so that's a nice Atari VCS and then it has the Asteroid. Yeah, classic Asteroid. So that's kind of nice. Game hard on it. Yeah, the packaging isn't super fancy, but I mean, honestly, it's, I like it. It's not vaporware, it's finally here. Yeah, it's <laughs> not. Yeah, it's real, like it's tangible, we can yeah, for our touch hands it. Up. Okay, and then they have like a little quick start guide here. Yeah, the QRC code, I guess, or... Yeah, there, now there's an app that you can actually use with the console as well, so that's probably part of that. And then it has some foam padding, so... Keep it protected, damage, yeah. um, And shipping. And so here it is. This is fine. Now it's interesting, uh, this one is kind of black and red, whereas the yeah. original Atari was black and like a yellow and an orange button. So that's just a little bit different, but still kind of has that classic Atari color theme or yeah. inspired by. Now we went with the Woody edition. Uh, they also had, um, I forget the, I think it was called Onyx. I think the other uh, colorway is black. Onyx and yeah. it matches this. But we kind of liked, you know, the, like the classic like Woody kind of like style yeah. look. But yeah, I like the texture. Like it has like a nice um, kind of like matte texture. It has like a nice like D-pad here that feels pretty good. Yeah, I guess almost like um, Xbox 360, yeah, so and, uh, they, not 360 Xbox, Xbox One controller. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. It's kind of surprisingly lighter. Yeah, it's really light. Uh, yeah, got it. Oop, I just turned it on. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it comes with a charge. If you're looking for a system, yeah, and it's got the disc for the D-pad, so we'll see how that yeah. plays out. Yeah, it's a decent controller. I mean, it feels a little a little bit wider, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it feels nice. Yeah. And then let's see, so it looks like micro USB. Unfortunately, it would have been nice to have a USB Type-C yeah. for charging, but yeah, I like it. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got. We got next. All right, so next up, then we have your classic joystick, which, you know, if you were in that generation and you played the Atari, you're very familiar with this yeah. type of stick here. 2600 inspired controller. Hopefully this one is easier to move the stick than that one was. Yes, that one was very <laughs> hard. It wasn't... Um... It was like it was stuck in molasses. <laughs> yeah. So this will be nice, obviously, for your your retro games that they have on there. And again, so we have the same Atari VCS with the asteroid kind of image there. Same type of packaging with the phone. Right, let's get this bad boy out. Maybe just take it from the bottom yeah, out. Little, there we go. Yeah. Oh, now one thing is nice uh, and I actually saw this. Now this is a micro USB as well, but it's really long. I think this is 10 feet, so you'll be able to, you know, have it wired and possibly be able to reach to your sit on your couch. Yeah, that'll, that'll be nice. yeah. And let's see. Let's see if it's. Yeah, it's definitely, it like, it definitely it's a, can look as not as stiff as... It feels a little loose though, like just like, just very light movement, it's like kind of, it's a little loose. But I mean, it feels better than the, the original. original. Yeah. We'll have to see how it Let's plays. It, it looks like, it's got a few more buttons. The original just had the one button and the stick. Yeah. Here you probably got a pairing button, action button. 
uh, maybe like a menu and select. Then it's got some rubber feet on the bottom, so if you want to yeah, table that mode, well, I guess. So it doesn't move around on you. Kind of like this. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, we'll see how that translates into games. But yeah, I definitely want this for the classic games. Oh, yeah, for sure. definitely. So we got the controllers unpacked. Let's get to the main attraction here. So the console itself, and like I said, we have the Woody edition. They also have the Onyx, which is in that black and red like uh, you saw with the controllers. Slide this out. And it has all your specs and everything here on the box as well. And the nice thing about this is it's not just a console. I mean, you can even call it it's a retro console, it's a modern console, but it's also a PC, which yeah. is actually really cool. So you're going to be able to do a lot of things with this. And you can stream games uh, from it too. Yeah. So, way. Okay. so again, same uh, asteroid thing here. More nice foam padding. All right. Oh, yeah. So, so since we were backers, we have a little certificate of authentic authentic authenticity. Yeah. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Tongue tie. Um, and I think we're supposed to be like a certain number. I don't see that it's on there. But this is one of 6,000 produced uh, units, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, keep, please store this document in a safe place. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll be sure to do that. I'm gonna put this out of the room for here. Yeah. And set the box aside. That's nice. I actually even like, I was. Uh, a little, oh yeah, that's nice. Like I, at first I, I was skeptical on how like the wood, yeah. veneer, or I guess whatever you want to call it. Paneling. <laughs> Paneling, <laughs> but it's nice. It actually kind of really feels like wood. I mean, I don't know if it is or not. I think it might be. Yeah, it has the, the, the kind of the vent aesthetic of the original 2600. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's no cartridge slot to put down in there. But yeah. So around back, you have uh, some inputs, your, your input output. You got two USB uh, 3.0s, HDMI, Ethernet, AC, adapter, and the power button. And they also around front, you have a USB 3.0. And it also tells us uh, out of 6,000 collector's edition that we're number three, uh, 3,325. So that makes it a little bit more special. That's what we get for our three year wait. Yeah. So. <laughs> but I like it. I like the finish. Um, I like the size. It feels nice. I like the wood panel. That's and nice. Now we're just going to have to find a place for a permanent home for it. Yeah, although, you know, this year we have, this is our third console now, yeah, so it's getting time. a little cramped. All right, so let's, let's see what else we have in the box. Uh, looks like we have the power Ooh. brick. Now this I don't like. I don't like that there's a power brick. Like, yeah. I thought we've, we've, we've moved on from the power brick. Yeah, generation. but you know, like a laptop or something, and this is basically like a mini PC. Yeah, gonna that's have, true. Gonna have that. Um, so we got looks like a US uh, no HDMI, HDMI cable yeah. and the power cord. Okay, so there you have it. That's, that's everything in the box there. Okay, so now that we have it unboxed, we're gonna get it hooked up and see how this thing performs. As Indiegogo backers, we got the Atari VCS Tribute Edition. We went with the Tribute Edition as it pays homage to the Atari 2600 of yesteryear. The design definitely brings back a lot of nostalgia vibes from a much simpler time in console gaming. The hardware is designed to be able to run classic Atari games as well as newer titles. The processing power of the Atari VCS is the AMD Socketon chip R1606G with Radeon Vega 3 graphics. It's a two-core processor with a base clock of 2.6 GHz. The processor will be more than capable of playing original Atari 2600 and arcade titles. As far as being able to play modern PC titles, it will leave owners wanting more horsepower. AMD's new Ryzen Psychodon chip V2000 would have given users a more capable machine. 
However, the Atari VCS has been delayed so many times already, this likely wasn't an option, in the interest of getting the units shipped to Indiegogo backers. The VCS comes with 8GB of memory via two 4GB DDR4 24MHz sticks. The memory can be upgraded to 32GB by installing two 16GB compatible memory sticks. The console's hard drive is a 32GB eMMC flash storage drive. The storage can be expanded using an internal M.2 slot, however there isn't an NVMe controller on board, so the SSD would need to be SATA based. Storage can also be expanded via one of the four USB ports with flash drives or hard drives. While having the controllers connected via Bluetooth, we noticed several drops when traversing the menu. Thankfully, we didn't notice any input drops in games. Wi-Fi connectivity was solid on the 5 GHz band connected to our Ubiquiti AC Pro access point. We experienced randomly the system fans would ramp up and ramp back down. This could happen just while being idle on the home screen. This is something that will hopefully be addressed in a system update. The UI was simplistic and aesthetically pleasing. I like the kind of 3D effect to the apps and game icons, which is a nice touch versus them being just flat. You have the home section which houses all your downloaded games and apps, but if you like a more organized approach, you also have a separate games and apps section. Also in the home section, you have the Chrome browser, which is a nice addition allowing you to quickly access and surf the internet. However, to navigate it requires a keyboard and mouse, or you can use the Atari Companion app, which we'll discuss later. Next you have the store, which is where you can find all the games and apps that are available to download. The store has all your major streaming apps like Netflix, Hulu, Plex, Disney Plus, and HBO Max. However, it's important to note that these actually aren't apps, rather a link shortcut to the desktop version of the service. You can display the Atari VCS in either 1080p or 4K resolution, and there is also support for streaming HDR content. At the time though, we noticed some stuttering and lag while displaying in 4K. Overall, the system doesn't appear to be optimized for 4K resolution, and text tends to be small, and you will notice that when you launch your streaming services. This makes things hard to see while sitting at a distance. And not to mention, in order to navigate streaming services, this also requires the use of a keyboard and mouse. However, the Atari VCS team is working on providing support for controller navigation in the future. In the meantime, you can also use the Atari Companion app. The Atari Companion app is available on iOS and Android. Once you download, you need to enter your email address and PIN that you created during setup. I initially had trouble logging into the app as it was not clear where you entered your email address. Once I finally got logged in, the app worked great and was a welcome addition. You have controller functionality and keyboard and mouse functionality within the app so you can do all your navigating from there. Going forward though, we will probably get a Bluetooth keyboard mouse combo and you can pick one up for fairly cheap. You also have the system section where you will find all your settings. Here you can also manage your storage, pair a Bluetooth device, and connect to Wi-Fi. Overall, we like the UI experience, but it would be nice to have more customization. For example, the ability to move around your games and apps icons and more personalization. Atari partnered with Power A for the controllers. They are well built and I like the overall design. The modern controller is reminiscent of an Xbox controller, so it's a familiar experience. It feels comfortable in the hand, and the buttons and triggers feel decent. The usual D-pad is replaced with a disc, which I actually don't mind. It feels nice, and I didn't experience any sticking. The modern controller also has rumble. The one downside of the controller was the Bluetooth connectivity problems we seemed to experience with it. We constantly experienced incorrect input response while navigating the UI. I didn't seem to notice this, however, in games. I believe this is something that they can fix with an update, so hopefully that will be ironed out before the units hit the general market, likely in spring 2021. If you're familiar with the Atari 2600, you will be familiar with the classic joystick controller, as it's meant to mimic the same look and functionality as the original controller. This will likely be your go-to controller if you want to play those classic Atari and arcade games. The buttons on the controller feel good as well, and you have an additional fire button at the top left side. 
If you plan on playing with the controller sitting on a table, you won't have to worry about it sliding around on you because there are two large rubber pads on the bottom. Like the modern controller, the joystick controller features rumble. Another addition is the LED lighting effects, which have different reactions based on which direction you move the stick while navigating. You also get lighting effects in some games. For example, while playing the arcade version of Asteroids, when you get hit, the controller rumbles and you get a nice little light show. The stick itself also doubles as a type of spinner that can be used for games like Super Breakout. With the Atari 2600, you had to use another controller, the paddle controller, to get this functionality. Another thing to note here is we didn't experience the Bluetooth connectivity issues that we seem to experience with the modern controller that caused incorrect input response while navigating the UI. Despite the Bluetooth issues, overall the controllers felt good and performed well in the games we played while using them. Here are our thoughts on gameplay. Playing classic games like Missile Command felt good using the classic controller. Asteroids as well was a good experience using the classic controller. Playing Super Breakout, we were able to make use of the spinning input built into the classic controller. The modern controller works for most classic games as well, at least for the ones without spinner functionality. The buttons and sticks on both controllers were adequate for gameplay. The controllers don't feel as premium as Xbox, Sony, or Nintendo pads, but they get the job done. Also, there wasn't any of the Bluetooth input drops in games like is present when traversing the menu. The Atari VCS comes bundled with Atari Vault Volume 1 and Missile Command Remastered. The Atari Vault Volume 1 comes with 100 games including Atari 2600 games as well as some classic Atari arcade games. There are about 12 indie games to choose from in the storefront and that number is growing. You also get 30 days free of Anstream, a game streaming service that lets you play arcade, Amiga, Commodore 64 and Spectrum Z games, as well as some other games on different platforms. After 30 days of the free trial, the service is $9.99 a month. There are over about 1,000 games on the service, and this is really welcome as there is not a lot to choose from in the Atari storefront. Answering provides a welcome selection of titles to play on your Atari VCS. The selection of games are heavily based on arcade games from the 80s era of arcade and computer games, as well as some others. This continues the nostalgia theme of the Atari VCS. The Atari VCS comes with the much touted PC mode. PC mode allows you to boot an alternate operating system, such as Windows, Linux, Chrome OS, or Steam OS. This opens up possibilities for more utility with the Atari VCS, as it is after all a mini PC. You can install Windows 10 to an M.2 drive for instance and then play games from your Steam account that are compatible with this hardware. Another benefit of having Windows 10 installed would be to install emulators and play retro games on the Atari VCS. We didn't have a spare M.2 drive lying around and attempted to run Windows 10 from a USB 3.0 flash drive with less than stellar results. So we would advise running an alternate OS with an M.2 drive for better results. Okay, now for our final thoughts. My first thing is, I'm not exactly sure who this is for. Maybe Atari enthusiasts or uh, retro game collectors, you know, those classic consoles came out, but this is kind of like more than the NES Classic and the yeah. Sega Genesis Classic and all those things. Um, so I'm not exactly sure. I mean, we had, you know, the new PlayStation 5 come out this year, the Xbox. It's definitely not going to outshine those, those uh, as far as uh, the capabilities of those things. And there's not a lot of games, or going to be more games coming. So I have a lot of questions about it. Another one is, will developers support it? I mean, yeah. are we going to see like a bunch of indie developers making games for this that's going to be on this platform that'll show up in the store? Um, you know, Atari talks about um, having indie developers develop games for it on Games Jolt, and those will be. The games that are, are coming, there's going to be a lot of indie game support, and they also says even eventually AAA game developers are going to make games for it. I mean, we've seen like the Switch get some AAA titles ported to it, like uh, The Witcher 3 and Doom Doom Eternal, and th those kinds of games on something that's you know not as powerful as the other consoles. So, are we going to see that in the future? Um, it is a good emulation box, and we'll leave a link to ETA Prime's video. But how many people are going to get this just for emulation? That, you know, 
But there's so many other Yeah, options. like $400 or, or so yeah. after it's all said and done. Like, I can't see people just getting it for that. Uh, there's other experiences with, like, as far as, like, you know, we had trouble with the UI and, and stuff and not being mm -hmm. optimized with 4K. I mean, NVIDIA Shield Pro, the 2019, is perfect for emulation, so it's less money. And so those are kind of, like, my thoughts on it. I mean, I really have a soft spot for Atari because they're the, the first company that kind of started the home console before Nintendo, before it's... Sega, there was Atari, and they kind of kicked off that home video game. I mean, it did crash a little bit after that because a lot of crappy games, well, there was crappy games coming out, and yeah. then the NES came and saved everything. But, I mean, they're the ones that kind of really kicked it off, so I really want to see this succeed. I want to see more games uh, for, like, developers supporting it, uh, you know, the, the experience with the UI to be better, and the controller issues and some of those other things. I just really, I really want to see it do better. So what did you think about it? Yeah, um, I'm like you. I, I really wanted to like it. Like we waited almost three years. Um, you know, we're big retro game fans, so Atari is definitely on that list. Uh, but I think right now, it's, yeah, it's really hard to recommend. Now, a lot of the things I think that they can fix. Yes, we had Bluetooth issues with the controller. Uh, and it seemed like the further away you got from it, the worse it was. Right. So if you're sitting on a couch, it's probably going to be worse. Um, I'm hoping that could be fixed with like a firmware update. Mm -hmm. um, the 4K optimization, I feel like that can come with a firmware. So there, there, there are things that can be fixed. Yeah. Hopefully they'll be fixed before they come to, you know, the general market. Right yeah. now, you know, we're basically the test dummies, yeah. the backers, yeah, so and that's fine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I like the design, I like the controllers, other than, the, like I said, the Bluetooth issue. Uh, but, you know, so they have Atari Vault, you can get that on Steam. Uh, they have Ant Stream, you can get that on other platforms as well. Right. So, as far as... Reasons to buy. Reasons to buy, you know, they, are, they do have, and they're adding, I think they added a couple more games, indie games the other day. And they have some nice indie games on there. And, uh, you know, they have mentioned AA or AAA titles. So, you know, we'll see about that if that comes. Yeah. So I, I think it has potential. Um, I, again, it's kind of hard to recommend right now. Right. But, you know, when it, like I said, when it comes out in spring, maybe that'll be different. Because yeah. they're already progressing a lot already. I mean, they have the um, Discord page, which all the backers can get in on and recommend stuff. Right. You know, talk about bugs and stuff like that. And they are actively, the t Atari VCS team is actively working on those things. Right. So I think, you know, I hope that, it'll be better. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, with that, I think it was the lead system architect, he left the company and he was suing for non-payment. I just kind of think that maybe it wasn't ready for prime time, but there have been so many delays and, yes. and they got it out the door that it's not quite ready. But maybe that just means more things hopefully are coming in the future. And that's kind of, uh, you know, the way I feel about it right, right now. So with that being said, what score do you get? Well, let's see what score I have here. And I gave it a Ooh, six. Okay. I gave it a six because like I said, I have a soft spot for Atari. I think there is potential for this to get better, like to be a system update. And the hardware is upgradable, so you can put like a, you know, M.2 SSD in it. You yeah. can upgrade the uh, the memory. So hopefully with those upgrades, there'll be, you know, software that can take advantage of that. And then mm -hmm. hopefully over time, like the, the whole like UI and the, the system bugs that we have will get better. Yeah. You know, and you can still do emulation. I know we're probably going to turn into an emulation box until mm -hmm. those other things, uh, games, uh, come forward. Hopefully, it'll be some really good indie titles, yeah. and maybe eventually ports of popular games will come to this platform. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hoping. So I gave it a six. Okay. I'm optimistic. Hopefully, we'll come back to it later, and it'll be better. Okay. I give it the same. <laughs> oh I really. I never, like, I, I hate giving stuff, you know, a failing grade or whatever you want to call it. Um, but, you know, again, it, this is right now. Right. These aren't even available in the general market right. yet. So, remember, this is right now. I hope it, it, it will get better. I, and I think it will. And, it, you know, it's also open source. So, and they're very open with 
with feedback and, right. and making changes. So that's the score right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we'll, I think we'll revisit, uh, you know, when it comes to the general market a little bit later, we'll do another video, see how it's doing and yeah. to give you more feedback. So you yeah. can decide if you want to make a purchase or not. Right. So those are our final thoughts and thank you guys for watching and remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye.